to HS Guitar Channel. Uh, this is episode 4 and the final episode of a series on how to record cover tracks. In this episode we will have some fun uh, with the lead guitar part. But before we get into that, if you haven't done so already, uh, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon uh, for notifications to ensure that you never miss any of my future videos. Thank you. So let's get started. Uh, we left off the previous uh, episode uh, with the drums, the bass and the rhythm guitar all recorded. So let's have a little listen to where we left off. <laughs> sounding pretty good uh, now that we've got a lot of the parts uh, recorded but now what we need to do is uh, look at recording uh, the lead guitar part so let's start by creating a new track and uh, we will call this the lead guitar if we can spell um, and let's uh, turn that on just now so let's talk about tone as always uh, so we need to think about a, a nice lead tone. So first things first, um, in terms of pickup setup, i am obviously got a HSS as before from when we talked about Rhythm. Um, this time I'm going to use a humbucker uh, at, the, at the bridge uh, because we want a really uh, present tone. I'm also putting the tone knob all the way up and the volume knob all the way up so that we're basically getting the, the a hottest signal we can from the guitar itself. So what does that sound like? Uh, well, you can hear it sounds not too bad. Um, but we want to up the tone of it uh, and get a bit better. So one thing uh, I want to do is I've got a Volwa pedal as we talked about in the, the bass episode in episode two. Um, so I'm going to turn that to uh, wah wah pedal. Um, so I'm got that's in the open position. But if I just set it to a closed position, we get this nice shaped sound where it sounds almost like it's underwater. So I'm going to use that kind of tone, but we need our preamps, our power amps, and our uh, cabinet uh, setup. So let's go through that setup. So let's start uh, with our preamp. Now, just like uh, previously, I'm going to use the anvil, uh, just like we did for the rhythm, as it's got three different uh, sounds, uh, the, the different channels, clean, rhythm and lead. We're going to go with lead, obviously. Uh, I'm going to turn the presence way up. I'm going to make it uh, a bright sound too. Um, so now what we get is something like this. So it's quite a sharp sound. Uh, we're then going to hit it with um, the power amp, TPA1, uh, and uh, we're going to turn the presence all the way up. So we're going to get quite a bit out of this, quite a hot signal for it. <laughs> it's uh, sounding pretty harsh right now, but it's still good. Let's soften it by adding the Marshall amps uh, as a cabinet. Uh, again, we're going to use uh, impulse response uh, to do that. Uh, again, we're going to balance it, uh, center it, and then we're going to use those lovely 1960 Marshall cabinets. So we get a, a nice warmer tone to that crisp, uh, edgy lead that we have already. Um, so that's probably good enough for what we want, uh, tone-wise. Um, Recording-wise, this time I'm going to try and record it the same way we did the bass, uh, without the click track and the lead-in, uh, and just uh, keeping it solo. So we'll turn off the, the 
lead in uh, pre-count on the clip tra track that we had before um, so that we can record uh, directly. Um, if we have a look at the uh, guitar tab uh, for this, uh, you can see there's quite a few bends. There is a repeated section, but it's got a different ending to it. Uh, so I'm going to try and just play through it in a single run. Um, and hopefully that will work out okay. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so let's uh, let's try and record it. Okay, that went okay. A few mistakes here and there, but we'll see how it goes when we try to uh, edit it and see if we can uh, make something of that. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on time stretching uh, on it so that we can edit it properly. I'm going to take off uh, any uh, spa uh, extra noise and background noise and space at the end. I'm going to do the same at the beginning. So we'll drag that in at the beginning. And uh, yeah, that should be about right. Bring it in a bit more. Okay, so let's push that to the very beginning. And then we will look to bring it in using uh, the Alt key. We'll drag it into the end. Now, it's about, uh, it's actually about a bar extra there because I did that little uh, additional, but at the end actually I'd say it was actually two bars extra, so let's move it to there and uh, we'll see how it lines up. So I, I don't think it's lined up very well, but let's listen to a, a solo anyway so that we can start looking at the timing uh, and where, it sh where things should line up. So, firstly, let's do the easy bit. We know that these should line up with the four first three bars of the outro. So let's try and line those up. We can see that they're quite far off at the moment. So if we zoom in, should be about here. We can do a split clip here, and we can use the Alt key and drag it back to the start of the outro, which is just here. And we can drag this all the way up to where it should be. Now, as before, we can take the end of our sound, just about here. We can split the clip there. We can split the clip at the start of the next, uh, the next slide part. And we can remove the noise in between. And we can Look to line this up so that it ends on second on the end, start of the second beat. So we can do that quite easily there, and we get quite good sound for that. We need to do the same here. So I think the start of this is slightly off the bar, so we'll just move it in. But it looks about right in terms of the actual sound. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll cut it about uh, maybe about there. And then we'll do the same at the other side of it. So I'm going to actually cut it about there. And then we'll get rid of the background noise from that stage. And we'll make sure that this is lining up there. It needs slightly too far here, so we'll hold down Alt. And we'll drag it back. And we'll get something that sounds like this. 
which is fine. And then we'll do the same again with the next one. So definitely off off from the start of the bar. Um, we also need to find the point where the sound ends. So we'll do that here. And the start of this is round about here. So we'll split there as well. And we'll take all this noise in between out of it. Then this should start on the bar marker, which is there. And it should go to beat 2. So that is just there. So that sounds OK. Now, we've got this part here, which should start on bar 12. So let's just hold down Alt and move it to the start of bar 12. And then we need to figure out where it ends. So let's listen to it. OK, so this long note here really should start uh, now, if we just check the tab, just to be certain, that really should be, uh, that long note at the end really should be starting uh, as the last third of the uh, of the last beat. Um, so probably we're talking about roughly, let me think now, so we've got a whole beat here from four to there, and we're splitting it into thirds. So it's going to be probably about here. So we need to bring uh, this here back to there. So let's do that. Let's cut it here. And we need to hold down Alt and drag it back to about there. So slightly fuller over. And a slight touch more again. And then we want to drag this back to there. And now let's listen to that whole thing. Okay, so that sounds good. We've got a little extra uh, bit of the end there, uh, similar to, to what happened live on the stage at Glastonbury. Uh, let's edit the other section at the start for the guitar solo. So we have the section here. What we want to do first is try and split it into where the, the bars should uh, start and end uh, and move it across that way for the timing. So let's look at the tab for the first bar. So the first bar we've got a half beat rest, uh, then we've got that full bend and then the second full bend is on beat 3 uh, and beat uh, four and, and the and of beat four is this here, but we've got this tie to uh, this um, beat here as well. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, what that means is we need to find, uh, first of all, find the end of this, which is that seven. So uh, let's listen to this here. So just about here, Let's try and get this. So just about here is the end of that first bar. Um, so if I split at the cursor position here, uh, and I'm going to move this on by holding down Alt, move this back to the bar 2. And then this starts with a half beat rest that we're not showing here at all at the moment. So let's move it along to that half beat rest. So there is our half beat right there. So we will move it along to there and then we will hold down Alt and we'll drag it out to the end here. That's not quite right though because if we look back at the tab there is a tie on this, this note here which ties to the first two parts of the triplet. Um, so what we want to do is move this out to the start of the, the triplet so it's going to be uh, if we're splitting this up into, uh, sorry, if we're splitting this up into three parts, uh, so we're talking about one, two, three, so we're round about here. Um, so if we start it here, uh, that should be good enough. Let's move it back to there. And uh, therefore, this note 
uh, well, first of all, let's drag it out to the end of this with an Alt key held down, um, so that we can we can get uh, it in order. Um, we can see straight away that this has moved it too far over, uh, so this needs to be extended. So we'll split the clip here. Um, this should be, uh, if we go back here, this should be a half beat, the last half beat of the bar. So uh, if we look, there's the half beat there. So we'll move this back to there, holding down Alt, and we'll do the same for this so that it starts on the half beat there and extends into the second bar. Okay, so let's listen to what that has now given us. <laughs> So that's okay for the first bar and into the second. Uh, so let's look at the second bar in the tab. The second bar in the tab, we've got these three um, with, with the triplets uh, rest in between. We've got these three notes, and then the start of the uh, of the ringing back and forth between twelve and uh, ten. Uh, between the, the top two strings. So we we want to get, let's try and get that first bit, because uh, this will be beat four with that triplet on the end. So if we can get that first bit uh, within the space that we've got uh, set out, then the timing of it will be, will be pretty much right. So let's listen to the section. Okay, so that's the, the free, the free, uh, three parts within that triplet um, played right there. So that's that. Duh, duh, duh. So that's all good. What we can do uh, is we can split here. Um, and we know uh, then that this part here is starting on the last beat. So we can also get rid of this uh, what looks just like noise, so just drag that in without holding down the Alt key. And then we know that should start on the fourth beat, so we will move it to there. And we know that this should last for the whole rest of the time. Um, now, we know then that we should get the first three notes, the triplet, happening uh, before the end of the bar. So we can jump in here, we can cut uh, at that point, and we can move this to the start of the next bar, and move this out to uh, complete our triplet. So let's uh, let's play that, listen to that, and see uh, what our first two bars sound like now. Okay, so sounding okay. The timing's much better than it was. We've we've corrected some of the faults uh, dur during uh, the recording. Uh, now we've got. Uh, a bar of uh, triplets uh, playing this 10-12 uh, uh, triplet form here uh, and then switching to the 10-9. So we want to switch on the bar here to the 10-9. So let's listen. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much already on the bar. Let's just uh, clip it there all the same. Um, but there is a little bit of a, a tail here with, with just uh, noise. So let's bring that in and then uh, stretch us out to the full bar. So then we get our bar of triplets. Okay, so that's sounding good. Um, so this is the end of the second bar of triplets. Uh, which is just here. Uh, so we can cut it there. And we can make sure that that sits on the bar marker. We can see that we're then getting into uh, essentially the repeated section. Um, what I would suggest we do now is because we corrected the timing on the first bit round, we could actually just replace this section with the timing from the first one so that we don't have to sort out those a uh, couple of bars uh, bad timing from the the previous time in fact we can probably go to bar four because that's where the difference comes in so if we look here it's all the same all the way up to here so we can take those first three bars and just swap out our fourth bar so let's do that 
Um, so first of all, we have to find in here where we switch to uh, the the second set of uh, triplets. So it's just here. So we can basically cut it at this point here. And we can actually then just throw this part away. Uh, and then take what we have uh, up to there by con uh, clicking here, shift clicking here, copying that across. And we know there's a, that half, uh, half beat uh, rest. So we have to go half a beat in and then paste it in to get our second uh, set. Now, we can see that we've got overlap on this because it's uh, running too long. Um, we can see that there's a long tail on this. Uh, so we'll need to bring this in. So we'll bring it into there just now. Move it across. And then we'll hold down Alt and shrink it into the right size. Now, let's listen to this, this little bar Hold on, uh, to make sure that we have it sounding right and we've cut off the right bit at the end. Okay, so that sounds not too bad. I'm going to bring it in a little more to about here. Yeah, to just about there. Uh, and then stretch it out uh, to match. And now if we listen to that... Sounds okay. Sounds great. So uh, let's move... That should be our entire recording. So let's move it up to the very top um, and let's have a listen to see our final recording uh, and hopefully it will all sound uh, good once we uh, let it run against the backing track. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so that sounds pretty good, but the lead is a little quiet against the rhythm. Uh, so let's uh, let's look at the power amp and bring the lead up a little bit, and let's listen again and see if that's okay. So that's a bit better uh, and sounds great. Um, so one other thing we want to do is we want to look at. Uh, because we're comparing this to uh, when they, they played at Glastonbury, we want it to sound like they're up on stage at a festival. Um, so what we'll do is, on the overall track, we'll drag in a plugin, VST plugin, and we'll look for an effect. In this case, we're going to put in some reverb, because we want it to sound like uh, it is out uh, in a festival. So I'm going to go with the large room preset, Hopefully that will sound okay. Um, so let's have a listen to that uh, and see if it sounds good. So I think you'll agree that sounds pretty good. It sounds like it's uh, been played at a festival, uh, big open sound, uh, and it sounds very similar to uh, High and Playing at Glastonbury that I played at the very beginning of the, the series. Um, so that's our edit complete. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this series of uh, videos and tutorials, and hopefully it will help you uh, record your own cover tracks in the future. Uh, and thanks very much for listening. Cheers. Bye now. Mm -hmm.